Well, hello, friend. Welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in New York. Beautiful day out here. Extremely hot, but beautiful. I'm at the park. I gathered up a little bit of water for my uh, car, for my hiking and things, and a couple gallons for the house. And I'm just enjoying myself. You know what, though? I have this wonderful relationship with God through the Holy Spirit, right? And everybody thinks I'm crazy because I believe I talk to God. And, you know, there's a lot of Christians that do talk to God. You know, they have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit talks to them. But they don't talk to you about it because, well, you would think they're crazy and they don't want to be judged. And, well, friend, I don't mind being judged. I don't mind what other people think because I'm in relationship with my Father, right? Because Jesus said that the Father would say it to him, he would say it to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would say it to us. So if you're, no matter who you think it's saying it to you, it's the Father saying it for himself, right? So that's the way to look at this. I'm telling you, if you want to find the best relationship on this planet, it, it's right here in your mind. Because in the beginning there was only God, right? And so... There was nowhere else to put anything. Jesus told you that the Father is in the Son, and the Son is in the Father, right? Or in his words, he said, I am in the Father, and the Father's in me. So what he was saying was, and then right in the Bible it says that the world was made through Christ. So if he is in the Father, and the world is made, and creation is made through him, well then, because we're in him and he's in us, then we're in the Father, and the Father's in us, right? And so therefore, the Holy Spirit is the voice of the Father, right? So this is, this is a great relationship, and I, I highly suggest you check it out. But I'll tell you, it's hard because when you think you want something of the world, then you're not willing until you get to know Jesus well enough and do the things he asked to understand what he meant. Because... Every judgment you make against another, you make against my Father and yourself, both, right? And I know people aren't going to understand that, but since everybody is in Christ because creation was made through Christ, and Christ is in the Father, therefore every judgment I make against you, I make against my Father because my Father's in you and you're in my Father. Now, I don't care if you're Christian or not. This truth is true because the Bible says it is. So Christians can call it a lie, but it's just not a lie because the Bible says it's not. <laughs> so, and Jesus is the key to all this. And Jesus said, ye are gods, and because it was written in the scripture, it cannot be undone. Right? So that means every judgment I make against you, I make against myself and my father. And, well, because if he was allowing all this to get done and he could stop it if he wanted to, but then every judgment I make, I make against God. So if I make a judgment against anything or anyone, I make it against the Father. Now, even though this is true, you also hear me on here calling Christian Pharisees Pharisees. And I call them snakes, meaning half-tongue wigglers, because the snake in the Garden of Eden, right, had a serpent with had a forked tongue. Jesus said that it was a liar from the beginning, it'll be a liar in the end. And it's in your head. That's what gives you free will. So I'm not one of these people that, that follow religion because religion makes zero logical sense of God. The whole thing's there and it's hidden and you can find it, but the price is high and the path is narrow because even though you'll have free will once you realize, if you understand what I'm saying is true, then you understand everything you do to your neighbor, you do to your father. And that means you have to start changing your ethical standards. Because if you cheat your neighbor, you've cheated your father, and therefore you've cheated yourself out of this relationship you could have with your father, right? Because you have to hide your thoughts. And that's the problem with these corporations and our ethical standards being lost. Because they require it, like I used to work in sales, right? And in corporate sales, and they want you to sell things, and they put you under pressure to sell things, so you'll sell things to people that they don't want because you believe it's good for them, even though if it's not. You'll convince yourself of that, right? So I lost my ethical standard because I had to make believe that I had the right to talk you into something you didn't want because I thought it was right for you. 
which you have to do in order to survive in corporate sales because it just is what it is. So these corporations are stealing the morals and ethics. That's why I call them the thought of Satan made flesh. Not only that, but there are a set of laws on paper and they don't even exist, right? And they have the rights of United States citizens here in America because of the Supreme Court uh, ruling Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission. They gave them those rights. And they sold our politicians into slavery, and they sold you into slavery with it, and so we sacrifice our children on the altar to our corporate gods. I tell you that often on here because it's true. So I've given up the world, and I do what I have to. I mean, you know, I live in a, in a country that has been consumed by consumerism and corporations, so you can't not interact with them, right? But I still call him the thought of Satan made flesh and tell him I'm going to drag that dragon straight back into hell just like my father said I would. I'll just keep talking until I do, friend. I, I love y'all and I love my father. And my father doesn't want to watch you make these ethical sacrifices that cost you your eternal life. Because if you're going to put the corporations in the world ahead of my father, well then you're not going to enter the kingdom. Because Jesus said you can't serve both God and money. You'll love one, hate the other, be loyal to one, despise the other. And since this is true, you can't serve two masters. You're going to have to make up your mind. Are you going to serve God or are you going to be more worried about keeping up with the world standards? So with that being said, that means that my life isn't about what I have. It's about my relationship with God because I put him ahead of the world. Now, I still have to live in the world, so I have to be in the world, just not of it, even though sometimes I seem to be of it, right? I mean, you know, I interact with other people, and so I still have other relationships, but my father's my primary relationship. And just on the way out here, me and him were talking, and he was like, you never had as much joy as you have with me, do you, Jason? And I said, no, I don't, Lord. I really don't. I've never had... I've, I've sought relationships with other folks, friend, with, with women and and even friends that are males and stuff. And it just, I've never been able to be as free as I am with the Holy Spirit. And I, I know that people don't think that God really wants to talk to you, but he really does. I mean, he really does. I mean, but you have to become willing to die in order to live. That means die to selfishness and rise in the spirit of love and seek out the Holy Spirit. Jesus did tell you that if you know him, you'd know the Father, and then when you get to know the Father, you'd really know him. So it's the Holy Spirit that testifies to me about Christ, which is to testify to me about the Father. So the better I got to know the one, the better I got to know the other, and the greater my kingdom has become. And then I got to the point where I hated this world and what I was doing and what everybody else was doing enough that I traded my life for his, right? And now... It's not that I'm perfect. It's just that I'm in relationship with the Father, and He tells me what I'm allowed to have and what I'm not, and I don't have to worry about what other people's opinion has no meaning to me, friend. So it doesn't matter whether you think I'm right or wrong, because it really doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, the only person I have to answer to on Judgment Day is Christ, and it's His words that judge me. So if I'm abiding in His words, and I'm in relationship with my Father through the Holy Spirit, well then, because the Holy Spirit is the voice of God, then What's the big deal? I mean, Christ, what he's doing is keeping my father blameless. My father wanted to be loved in the beginning. Uh, and so he's, he'll be loved in the beginning and he'll be loved in the end. And Christ will judge you so the father doesn't have to. Because Christ was named king, right? So my father doesn't have to judge you because Christ is going to judge you. And therefore, my father will get his desired uh, experience, which is to know love by experience. He doesn't have to judge you. That's the son's job right? And the Son's in me, and I'm in him, and therefore I speak to you on his behalf. You don't have to believe that, but it's true. Do you think I want to say these things about public and traded corporations and thought of Satan made flesh? Of course not. Do you think people love me for it? Of course not. I'm always calling out our government for being thieves and all that. That's just a fact, friend. They're sold slaves, and they've sold us into slavery too. And we're sacrificing our children on the altar to our corporate gods. And there just is a price to that. That is why we're Mystery Babylon. We manifested the thought of Satan flesh. We perfected it and then infected the world with it. There is a debt for that. There's just no way around that. 
unless we repent. But do you think we're going to repent? No, probably not. My father won't show me. I keep talking, but not too many people listen. But it really doesn't matter because it never really did, friend. Because this relationship with God is a choice that you make. I'm in relationship with my Father through the Son, through the Holy Spirit. And therefore, I'm in great joy. And because I'm in great joy, I can come on here and talk to you. And, and I hope you find it, what I say, joyful. And I, I sure hope that some of you that I've been talking to have really been listening to what I'm saying and are finding this kingdom that I've got. It, but just know that because you find it, the rest, it won't unite your house, friend. It will divide it. Because all those Christians that told you that, that you couldn't hear from the voice of God, if you get in a relationship with him and, and he starts putting you two things, they'll be like, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> like they know what, to, what my father will do for you, right? See, friend, I never, even though I speak what sounds like a lot of judgment and call people hypocrites on here, I'm not really judging you because I can't judge you. I'm not without sin, right? Only the firstborn was, but the firstborn is in me, and he said that when I go before my judges, which is this camera, did not to think about what to say, that he give me what to say at that very hour. So on here I talk about whatever it is that he wants to talk about because he talks about it through me. I don't care whether you believe that, like I said, because everybody thinks I'm a nut job anyway, friend, but it really doesn't matter. My father takes care of me in this crazy way, and I take care of other people and help people where my father asks me to. But a huge portion of my job is to seek the kingdom first every day. I get up in the morning, I seek the kingdom first. Then in the afternoon, usually I'm out here on the camera at some point, but I'm out hiking or doing whatever, meditating in some park or woods, putting my father first because that's how this relationship works. That's what he wants. He only created us all so that he might know love by experience. In the beginning, there was only God. Angels don't have free will. He's not going to know their love by experience like the way he does us, right? <clears throat> Satan doesn't love or hate God. Satan serves his purpose. And any church that tells you anything different is a liar. Because Satan has no power to overcome God, right? It says right in the Bible many times that, that Satan enters the Father's throne room. Like the testing Job thing. People sometimes blow that out of context. My father got to know love by experience because even though the thought of Satan put Job through a hard time, my father got to know love by experience, and trust me, Job, out in the end of it, would have gotten a great kingdom for it, right? I mean, there's a, there is like a reward for, for what we do here, and there is consequences too. So hell is coming to the earth, and I've been telling you that too. I'm not lying. But that's a free will choice on whether you want to be here for it or... You know, even if it comes and I'm still here, because I might be, because I'm not so sure I'm getting out for this pre-tribulation rapture, even if it comes. I kind of made my father a deal. I'm the wilderness goat, right? So, it, it's a long story, but I'll give it to you real quick. Jesus and Judas created Yom Kippur. Jesus was the altar goat. Judas was the wilderness goat. And if you go look at Yom Kippur, you will see that what they did was every year for Yom Kippur, the celebration of Yom Kippur, they killed the old, both, clean, both goats were clean and the altar was, you know, the uh, lottery was drawn. One went to the altar, one went to the wilderness. So, you know, there was a lottery drawn for these goats to do what they do. So the one goat was put on the altar, it was killed and the blood was drained from it, right? They... They cut its throat, and then they took and drained the blood into, and then they dumped it on the wilderness goat. That's the that's representing dumping the sins of Israel on the wilderness goat. So that's what Jesus did with Judas, and you know that because Barabbas was in jail for killing in an uprising. So, and more troops were entering into Israel, and if what happened was Rome, you know, expected to get taxes out of them, and they were rebelling and not paying their taxes. And, you know, so Rome was going to cut off the dead branch called Israel and, you know, gather it up and throw it into the furnace. In other words, kill off the Jews. 
So Jesus came to put his blood above their door. And then you can tell that that's what he did and how did it work because it's at Jesus' crucifixion, it said that Pilate and Herod became friends and it said that the crowd and the Pharisees yelled to Pilate, we have no king but Caesar. And they also said, let his blood be put on our head, right? So understand that they were accountable for the death of the firstborn and only begotten son of Christ, the one that creation was made through, the king of the world. Do you think by the law they wouldn't have to pay a debt for that according to Jewish law? Well, of course they would. So my father created Yom Kippur in the beginning so that he could use it when it was time for Christ to come. And Judas was the second scapegoat. So Jesus took his bread, which was his body, right? And he dipped it in his wine, which was his blood. He sopped it up, soaked up the wine, soaked up his blood onto the bread. And he handed it to Judas. And when he handed it to Judas, it said that Satan entered into him because he had just poured his blood on him, right? When he took it, he got his blood on him. So now Judas has, is the wilderness goat. And Jesus, or Judas said to Jesus, he said, not me, Lord. And Jesus said, go do what you must do. He cast him from the lot. He cast him into the wilderness. Judas is your wilderness goat. So that's how what Yom Kippur. So Jesus put the blame of his death on Judas so that he didn't have to blame the Jews, right? So they're not accountable for his death. So if you're, if you're blaming them, you're wrong for doing it, friend, because it was never their fault. Christ did it to himself. He told you. He said that I willingly give up my life. So he, he willingly did that to save the Jews from extinction because Rome was notorious for killing off tribes. And you can go look in history and you'll see that to be true. I know that by watching a documentary at one point, I know at least three different other tribes that they wiped out, Rome wiped out entirely, right? That don't no longer exist. So they were going to do that to Israel, and my father made a promise to Abraham. And so therefore, he cannot let that bloodline get broken, right? And so because of the Jews were acting up, Jesus had to put his blood over their door so the death would pass them by, just like, you know, during the Moses and the exodus from uh, Egypt. So, and that is also why my father asked Abraham to sacrifice his firstborn son because he was going to have to sacrifice himself. He was like, well, you got to be willing to sacrifice what you love most if I'm going to put my firstborn son on the altar, right? So he told Abraham to do it. Abraham went and did it. Then at the last second, he said, no, that's it. He just needed his willingness. He went, And it's also not just for Abraham, but it was also for you in the Bible because now you and I can look at that and see what's going on, right? So if you look at what I'm saying, you will go find it all. It's hidden in the Gospels. You have to hide, You have to find it. Because like where I'm saying he said these things, it's in different bits and pieces in the Gospel. My father hid it till the end of the age. He's slick like that. <laughs> My father, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing. And the matter of kings to search a matter out, right? So that's the way this works. And I didn't, I didn't actually find it, friend. The Holy Spirit came to me and told me I was supposed to read Jesus over and over and over. And I did. I just sat for a long time on this mountain where I was for a while and <clears throat> read Jesus over and over and over. And then later, all of a sudden, he brought it back to me. And all the, because I've seen so much of what Jesus said so many times, these things come into my mind. My Father, through the Holy Spirit, can bring them into my mind. And he put all these things together in order for me so that I would understand it. And so now I see that that's the truth. You don't have to believe that, friend. But it is true, and that's the reason the Jews will turn, and that's the reason he has the right to be their king. He will be their Mashiach, right? And they will call for him because, well, I've been talking about it now for a couple of years, I guess, at least, about the Jews. I didn't know in the beginning. My father, my father reveals things to me as I go, so I don't always know everything. And I never heard anybody else talk about that, friend. And now I've been talking about it a couple of years. Maybe you've heard someone else talking about it. I don't know. Um, you know, I start talking about now. About four years ago, I did start calling a publicly traded corporation the thought of Satan made flesh. And I did 
year later start hearing other people say it. So, and God showed me that directly when I was looking in the Bible one time, and it was in a Bible I don't normally read, and it's not in the one that I have now. But in that Bible, it said that the thought of Satan, or it says Satan is what is not yet is, and that we give that, you know, Satan flesh, and that's what a publicly traded corporation is. It is what is not yet is. It's nothing but a set of laws on paper. It's an entity that doesn't exist, that has no consciousness, and we're killing everybody with it, right? For greed, for selfishness, for lust, for all the things that God told us not to do. They are our idol. They are the manifestation of all the idols that we worship, right? That's, you know, that's how we, we get all these things we get. Now, even though it's all wrong, it's still all right because my father allowed it. So it gets really hard. And for me to speak absolute truth is to make absolutely no sense to somebody that's seeking the world and is not ready to become willing to die in order to live. So very rarely do I speak absolute truth in a way that you'll understand because most of you won't be able to understand it and there is an accountability so if you think that just because God allows it doesn't mean there's not a consequence to your action that's not true either he told you not to do it though he did lay down the law and told you this is what I want from you and so therefore and he told you to hang all the laws and all the prophets on only two commandments and Jesus said that one was like the other it's right in the Bible go look friend so I hope you're reading a red letter edition of the Bible and you really know Jesus because there is a debt. If you're going to say you know Jesus and then go around hurt my father's children, steal, treat them poorly. Well, every child you treat poorly, you treat the father poorly and the son. Because creation was made through him, every person that you condemn, you condemn Christ and my father for it also. I'm not lying to you about that. That's the reason Jesus told you if you invite me in, my Father will come and make his home in you also. So that you're very clear that whatever you do, you do in the name of the Father. And because you do it in his name, you do it against the Father. Now, it's not about perfection. It's about starting off as the smallest of all mustards, um, smallest of all seeds, which is mustard seed, and turning into the greatest garden plant of his time and age in place. And that was a mustard tree. And so therefore, it gave shade and rest to the birds meaning that you and I will give shade and rest to others. We'll give love and forgiveness and compassion and mercy, right? My father desires mercy, not sacrifice. So I have mercy. However, mercy requires sacrifice. I have to sacrifice justice. I have to sacrifice selfishness, right? So there is sacrifice that goes with mercy, but if I'm doing it for mercy's sake, I'm doing it for love's sake, not not for pride's sake, not for credit, not, you know what I'm saying? So this is about a relationship with my father, and he'll show this all to you, but you have to get to that place. So I am the wilderness goat. I am the spirit of Judas returned. And most of y'all won't believe that, and I can't prove it. I don't even remember, but you got to remember that when the Pharisees asked Elijah, I mean, John the Baptist, if he was Elijah, he said no. However, Jesus twice said he was Elijah returned. One time he said, for those that would believe it. Another time they said, but I thought Elijah had to come first, coming down off the mountain of transfiguration. And Christ said, um, I tell you, he did come first, and they do, did with him what they pleased. And it said that the apostles knew then that he was talking about John the Baptist, right? So you know that twice Jesus said that, that Elijah was John the Baptist, and John the Baptist said he wasn't which means either John the Baptist, the, the, the one that there was no one greater other than Christ, is a liar, or John was telling the truth according to the way he understood it, right? So in that case, both told the truth according to the truth they had. So the Holy Spirit has revealed to me that I am the spirit of Judas, returned the prodigal son, uh, you know, let loose from hell, I was in pain and suffering, friend, before I received this kingdom. I'm not lying to you. I've done, I, at an early age, I was dipped in the blood of the church and cast into hell. I paid my debt, friend. But I've also asked for forgiveness, and I forgive everybody else their debt so I can be forgiven mine. It's that simple. If I don't forgive you, I don't get forgiven because Christ told me it's true. <laughs> Plus, 
Then if I hold you unforgiven, I hold my father unforgiven because when I call you evil, I call him evil. And if you want the kingdom, don't call your father evil. Right? So if you're a Christian, I hope you're making sense of this because if you're not, you're standing on the steps of the temple judging everybody, being like, how righteous am I? And it's all their fault. Well, when you said it was their fault, you said it was my father's because my father allowed it and you judged him for it. There's a lot going on here, friend. So only those that truly seek the kingdom, right? He told you when you, when you want the bread of life, don't knock on the door to the lightly because the father's going to yell down, go away, the hour's late, I'm in bed with my children. That would be Christ yelling at you, right? <laughs> Since the world made through him. However, when you, uh, he said to knock out a sheer audacity. So you got to be like, Father, give me my bread, right? And you do that by doing what he asked. You've got to go, it's not going to even make sense to you, friend, first. I, I, I thought Jesus was kind of crazy, but I was trying to do it anyway because I kind of believed and kind of didn't because I really wanted to be an atheist and I didn't believe in eternal hell and none of this made any sense to me. But I kept doing it because Jesus, there seemed to be enough proof about that Jesus really did die for us and that he willingly went to his death and said it in advance. And if you don't know that Jesus really existed, you have done no research at all. Or you've set your heart on trying to prove against it. There's a, I watched the testimony and the movie they made of the guy with the case for Christ, plus a lot of other things. There is plenty of proof that God is and that that Bible's real. And I'm not saying that everything is perfect in translation the way that you understand it, because Jesus wasn't using the word Hades that they translate to hell. He was using the word Gehenna, which is the Valley of Gehenna, which was a group from the tribe of Judah that used to sacrifice their uh, children on a god, god called Moloch on his altar, like America, the tribe of Judah, now sacrifices its children on the altar to its corporate gods. So do you think that my father might burn this nation up for that? I hope you're thinking about what you're thinking about, friend. Christ told you this day was going to come, and it's getting close. You know, the Euphrates River's drying up. The caves have showed up. I'm not, I don't care whether you believe that there's actually four literal angels held under the Euphrates. I personally, that isn't what the Holy Spirit showed me. But it is a sign of the times. That tells you this is the time to become in the spirit of love if that's what you want to make the choice. Because if you're not in relationship with my father, he has no interest in letting you into his kingdom so you can make the same choices there as you did here. You've got to have a free will choice. Do you think he's good? A lot of the church doesn't even think about what they're thinking about. Jesus' kingdom comes after the tribulation and all that, right? And then there's a thousand years and then Satan's led out of his cage. Who do you think let Satan out of the cage? Do you think my father or Christ is going to let Satan out of his cage back into his own kingdom? Would that make any sense whatsoever? No, it's going to be us that's going to do it, right? Because a thousand years later, we'll forget. We'll gather in the name of selfishness. Two or more will gather in its name and it will gain strength. And we'll start manifesting it flesh again. And we'll do this all again. And then my father will, it says then that time will, it'll get stopped. So it is what it is. I don't get it all, friend. My, my father has shown me a completely different truth than what the church is saying, and mine makes more sense to me than theirs. You can go whatever you want with. My father doesn't care about whether you're perfect in knowledge. He wants you to be perfect in love. He wants you to, and not in the way that your, your Pharisees will tell you. And, and they'll, They will lay heavy burdens on you, and they won't lift one finger to help you carry them, just like the Jews in the day, the Pharisees in his day, or the, the Pharisees in ours are no different. A lot of them are fleecing you, they're milking you like cows for money, they do nothing except sit up there and preach about things that they don't even put into practice. It just is what it is. Look at all these prosperity preachers out front, they're, they've got private jets, they're, they're driving around fancy cars, living in mansions and going on super expensive vacations. Do you think my father is going to make them pay twice the debt at the end of the age for what, he, what, they've, what they've done? I can tell you he will because Jesus told you he was. It's that simple. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't know Jesus. 
they use words to manipulate you into what is they want you to think. They use Pollyannity to deny Christ. Can't do it, friend. They might have twisted it up on you and taught you to memorize only certain verses so that you wouldn't actually understand Christ. But at the end of the day, it's his words that judge you. He said it outright, and then it's also said when he said that if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will by no means enter my kingdom. Well, since in the beginning of John it says he is the word made flesh, that means his flesh is his word and his blood is his spirit. So in translation it is, if you don't eat my words and drink my spirit, you will by no means enter the kingdom. And he told you, be glad I go to the Father, because I go to the Father. The Spirit of truth would come to you. And even though what he told you was true, even greater truths will you be given. Have you been given any yet, friend? Are you seeking them out? I mean, sometimes my Father gives them to me directly, like the whole thing with Yom Kippur and Jesus and Judas. He gave me that directly. I never heard anybody else talk about it. But a lot of things he also gives me through other people. And there's a number of things he gives me directly. That allows me to know that he's in me and I'm in him and that I'm doing this right, even if it appears I'm doing it wrong. A lot of people say I'm doing this wrong because I care nothing for the world. I just let my father take care of me and he just leads me down a path that anybody that's seeking the world will say I'm insane. And I really don't care because I think this world is insane, friend. <laughs> And anybody that doesn't think so, I think is insane too. I mean, if you look at what we're doing to our kids, and we're just allowing this, we're just letting this go down like, like God isn't going to judge us for it. You're not out feeding hungry, clothing naked, visiting the sick and in prison. You're not trying to change the world. You think you're, a lot of these Christians believe that a free kingdom in your death that you didn't seek in your life, and Jesus did not say that. In fact, he said, the kingdom would not be said to be here or there, but the kingdom of God would be said to be within you. So it's within you, and I have it. It's within me. And that's why I'm in relationship with my father, and he talks to me, and I talk to him, and we have this wonderful time. And I'm like a child a lot of the time because I'm all lighthearted and joyous because of this relationship I have. But the world declared me a voice here because everybody thinks you can't talk to God like I do. I really don't personally care. And my father told me in the beginning when he did all this, he said, nobody's going to believe you, Jason. And they're going to hate you for everything you say. Will you do it for me? And I said, yes, Lord, I'll do it for you. <laughs> so you can hate me. You can judge me. You can think I'm crazy. I don't care. In the end, I'm telling you the truth. And the truth will set you free or it will condemn you because Christ's words are going to condemn you. And you will be condemned. And though hell isn't for eternity, every moment in it, you're going to think is eternity. That I can tell you. When I was in it, it seems like an eternity. So now's a great time to repent, meaning admit you're wrong and change your mind and make a new choice because my Father wants you to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That means adore Him in thought and love. It's wonderful. And the more you get to know Him, the more you'll want to know Him until you become willing to die in order to live and then you end up with Holy Spirit and a fullness in a way that I can't even explain to you. But I can't explain it to you because you wouldn't believe it anyway. So it is, it is literally the Father that taught me how to do this. No one else taught me how to do it. Everybody else told me you can't do it. So he had to teach me for himself, and he did. And, and I love it. But at the same time, I can't prove I'm doing it. I can't prove I talk to God. It doesn't matter what you think. You don't bring me the kingdom. My Father does. Right? So that's the way this works. So, friend, I just hope you find this. I really do. It's a joyful thing, and it might cost you a lot. It cost me a lot. I went through hell to get here. I'm not lying to you. I went through some really hard times. I kept believing in him, and I didn't understand how to, and it's a long story. <laughs> I've, I've put it out there different times. Throughout my videos, I've gotten a little bit of my story that I've gone through this search for God. and I talk about bits and pieces here and there all the time. So, friend, just know I love you because my Father loves you. And I'm not condemning anybody, but I am telling you, you will be condemned if you don't know Christ and you don't know what He said, because at the end of the age, His words are going to be revealed to you, what He said and meant, and then you're going to hang your head in shame and cast yourself into the darkness, because you know you don't deserve the Father's kingdom, because you said you believed in Jesus, but you didn't 
believe in Jesus, you didn't go love your neighbor as yourself. Or you did. You might have. You might be the one, right? I'm just saying that you might not be the one. And I'm hoping that some of you that haven't been that would hear me and make a new choice by going and getting a red letter edition of the Bible and reading what Jesus said and read and let my father put that message together for you his way. Forget the way these priests want you to believe. I don't care what they want you to believe. I want you to find the Holy Spirit and let him testify to you about him. <laughs> right? Because the, the three are one. There is only one God. But in creation, it appears there's three. It's very complicated, yet it's so simple, all at the same time. All right, friend, we just know I love you because my Father loves you. and May God bless you and yours.